Steven Spielberg is a master at creating tension and giving us fear, making us afraid. What, what we're going to do is going to look at Jurassic Park, the original, the original. And we're going to look at my favourite scene, one of my favourite scenes of all time. When T-Rex, when T-Rex escapes. Now yeah, we're going to look at this very famous scene, break it down, look at some little, some little areas, some little nuances, some little things that happen. See why it built so much tension, why it became legendary, legendary, and how we can use those techniques from the great master Steve and make our own stories better. Let's get cracking. The first thing with Mr. Spielberg is he doesn't bang, he doesn't jump straight into the scares, all right? He doesn't jump straight in and, and get ya. He lets tension build, okay? He lets the tension build. It's gonna go through the abandoned building. Not a bad little spot. But I think it was Alfred Hitchcock. Correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong. But he said the quote, if you have a bomb under the table, bang, it goes off. When there's people talking, you have one moment one moment of fright, one moment where you're scared, and that's when the bomb goes off. But if you have, oh, car coming. But if you have, at the start of this. Now where does he think he's going? If you have, if you show the audience there's a bomb under the table at the start of the conversation, and for five minutes, before the bomb goes off, what have you got? You got tension, you got fear, it's gripping your heart and soul. That's one of the great secrets to whether you're writing a screenplay, making a movie, writing a novel. You can't just make scary things happen. A monster just jumping out is not scary, okay? Jurassic Park 3, they see the T-Rex, he's just eating something, and he raises his head up from the monster and looks at him. And the dude says, don't run, and then they all run, but it's not scary because it's just, it's right there. And then it fights over the other big bonosaurus thing. It's not as good as Spielberg as there's just no tension built. But first, let's talk about Jaws. As I uh, traverse the little narrow path here. In Jaws, I spoke about this one of my earlier videos. Let's step back and have a look at a run a classic. But he didn't want the shark to be seen until the end. What he wanted was the effects of the shark, okay? what it was doing, what it was creating. And we saw that many times with the barrels, shot with the barrels, took out the pier, it did all sorts of things. We saw the effects of the shark. We never saw the shark itself. It's creating tension, getting us going. Why is that scary? Now you may notice at the start of this thing, what's the first thing that happens? The goat disappears. Where's the goat? That could be the second thing. There's also, there's the water, there's the water. Little cups of water on the front of the dash of the car, what happens? Boom. Boom. We hear the footsteps of the great T-Rex and the water just, it trickles a little bit. Now that's scary, that's scary because it's creating tension. Why is it really scary? The clue is down this alley. And this alley, it's not scary, it's just an alley. But if you start imagining about all the big monsters that can come out and get you, a big Doberman here, Rottweiler here, and if you start imagining these things in your head, you can get scared. Another example, see inside my hand right there? Okay, it's dark inside my hand. But no one would be scared of that dark. Even if you're a little kid, he's scared of the dark. He's not scared of the dark in the hand because he knows there's nothing in it. When somebody's scared of the dark, they're not really. It's their own imaginations, and they're afraid of what they do not know. If this is dark now, I can't see down there. So I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of what I don't know is down there. And my own head starts making up all these imaginations. The Doberman, the Rottweiler, the rhinoceros is gonna charge down with these big, big rhino tusk things and stab me. That's what makes you afraid. I'm going to show you the town down here where I uh, 
frequently frequent for coffee. When you gotta go, you gotta go. If there's a dog, I'll, I'll start running. Now that's what Spielberg has done here. To seeing the water going, we start imagining the T-Rex walking. Then they show the goat disappeared. The goat's not there anymore. We've imagined. And he's eating the goat. And she says, where's the goat? And then <laughs> lands on the roof and we jump back. Let me see the claw coming down. Oh, there it goes. It's the power trying to come back on. And then you see the fence ripping down. All these little things building tension in your mind. The imagination's running, we're getting scared. And then the big beast eats the goat. Still don't see him all, just his head. We're still thinking. And finally he charges through. A big T-Rex. You gotta you gotta have a payoff. You can't have the tension that nothing happens, so you need the payoff. Things have gotta happen now that he's here. But he just doesn't charge in and eat people. Some little things happen. And you might notice, when he goes in, Howard Village, so then heaps of little things happen. Heaps of little things happen. Coffee here, not a bad little, little place, saintly here. Great coffee. The big T-Rex doesn't just eat people. The light comes on. And then we hear some dialogue, building tension. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. Charge towards the light. I can't get it off. And then the big beam points on his eye. And we see his eye dilating back and forth. <laughs> Builds more tension. The imagination Had, has a nibble on the car. A little bump with its head. It keeps building. It keeps escalating tension, okay? That's what you need. You've got to build. Escalate tension for a great scene. Don't just whack it out there. You gotta build and escalate. Build and escalate. Then eventually, eventually it attacks. It's biting down on the roof. I'm sorry! The kids are screaming. The man's gotta get out with the flare. Hey, hey. Then eventually comes the payoff that he eats the guy. He eats the guy on the toilet. We all right shakes in her hand. And we all have a bit of a laugh. Just traversing on back here. Thought I'd show you some artwork. But it's not over and he comes back. The guy and the girl and he grabs the tight. Just don't move. Cuts here. <laughs> We don't move, and he comes right past and uh, blows the hat off. But he's got um, he's probably got a better hairdo than me. That's Papa, Papa, Papa uh, Giuseppe, Papa Giuseppe. And then eventually, he drags her out. They move the car around. They go over the cliff. And that's not straight away either. They just jump off the cliff and the car's hanging down. There's three swings. He goes one, two, three. The third swing, he gets down. Car shoots down, spanks into the tree. Just remember that when you're creating tension, creating fear, getting people excited. Don't just chuck it all out there at once. Bakery goods. Don't just chuck it all there at once. You gotta slowly build and escalate to bigger events. And that's how you create tension like the master, Mr. Spielberg. That's how you can create tension in your own story. So subscribe, drop a comment below and thumb up. But remember, when you're doing your scary scenes, 
You tense scenes to build tension. It's bit by bit. You can use the imagination, get people thinking, and you'll create great tension in your story of Jurassic T-Rex proportions. <laughs>